Previously, Chu Ting woke up in his apartment and on planning to leave, he met Ling Ru Tian by his door. They interacted for a while, and when Ling Ru Tian was about to leave, his grandma's insect emperor appeared and landed on his shoulder. Ling Ru Tian's grandma's consciousness appears and tells him she is dead and the Lai Yi village is gone due to an enemy attack. She tells him not to dream about revenge and run away as fast as she can, never to return to the Lai Yi village. The consciousness disappears and Ling Ru Tian, with tears in his eyes, tells Chu Ting he has to return to the Lai Yi village and prepares to leave. However, Chu King holds him back and tells him that it's too dangerous as he might be putting his life in death's hands since his enemies are strong and he doesn't know who they are. Ling Ru Tian tells him that his grandma's consciousness is still on their insects, and he suspects that their insect, Cicada, has become the new emperor ever since it killed his grandma's emperor insect. Chu Ting deduces that they must be from the Xuandu Palace as Shai Lan must have taught them something during her long stay there. Chu Ting decides to follow him to return the favor of him, saving him once before. They head to the Lai Yi village, and on getting there, Ling Ru Tian sees that Mo Chan has corroded his kins into venom. He runs inside their house and sees his grandma sitting. He tries to run to her, but Chu Ting quickly stops him, telling him it's a trap. Chu Ting strikes the grandma with a beam of light from his hand. The consciousness of another suddenly emerges from the grandma and attacks them with firestorms. However, Chu Ting shields them with a protective barrier. After, Ling Ru Chen buries his grandma and promises to avenge her of their kin. He begins to play his pipe, and the souls of his kin fly away in the form of insects. Chu Ting suddenly perceives some people are spying on them, and he asks who they are. He launches an attack with his sword, which causes an explosion. He senses it's the seventh elder of the Xuandu Palace, the hiding master Xending, and one other strange girl. Meanwhile, the other lady with Xining is already injured. Kexining is angry that she was careless, allowing Chu Qing to spot them. Suddenly, Kexining is alerted of an assembly call at the Xuan New Palace, and they head there immediately. The next day, the Empress is surprised that Dikan, the Xuan New Palace master, went to the extent of slaying the whole Lai Yi village. Ling Ru Tian decides to join the Imperial Palace in fighting against the Xuan New Palace so he can have the chance to avenge his people. The Empress tells Cheng Tian to report the latest news from the Xuan Nu Palace, and Cheng Tian tells everyone that they have located the position of the island where the Xuan Nu Palace hides, and they are about to send a pioneer team to investigate. Chu Ting, Ling Ru Tian, and Meng Zhu volunteer to go, but Meng Zhu is prevented since she has just recovered and is pregnant. The Empress says that the crucial force retreated after the position of the Xuan Nu Palace was discovered and she wants Chu Ting to investigate more and collect as much information as possible about the location. She then tells everyone to excuse her as she wants to talk with Chu Ting. After Meng Zui and Ling Ruo Tai and step out, she tells Chu Ting that what she said earlier was not true. An undercover agent is working in the crucial force of the Xuan Nu Palace, and his real mission is to trace the information the undercover agent has left behind. Chu Ting asks how he will find the person, and the Empress shows him a messenger butterfly telling him to find the kind and bring it back. Chu Ting, Zhang Lan, and Ling Ru Tin head to the Xuan Nu Palace on the East Ocean. Chu Ting scans the island and senses no living trace on it. He says the invisibility spell has been used to cover the whole island. Ling Ru Tin says he has a way and sends out his insect. The seventh elder, Xining, suddenly appears to welcome them. She shows them a way to pass, saying it's the only way through but Chu King perceives she must be trying to deceive them, and he grabs her neck. Xining vanishes immediately. It was a disguise. They soon enter the soul enchantment field, and suddenly, many arrows are fired at them. But Chu King protects himself and his partners with a protective barrier. Xining's consciousness appears to them, and she releases a poisonous gas into the atmosphere. On seeing this, Ling Ruo Chen quickly takes some detoxifying pills from his bag and offers them to Chu King and Jiang Lian. However, Xining swiftly steals them with her invisibility and attempts to take him away. Not seeing Xining, Chu Ting fires an attack just behind Ling Ru Tian, injuring Xining. Ling Ru Chen gives them his insects to eat since Xining already took the detoxifying pills. Zhang Lian passes out from the irritation of this, and Chu Ting carries her while they continue walking until they reach another location called the Frosty Land. Chu Ting, now impatient after walking and walking, summons his sword and sends it to strike the layer masking them from finding the Xuan Nu Palace. 
Jang Lion wakes up and sees they have located the Xuan Nu Palace. De Kun soon asks Xu Xing to step inside alone to fight with her, since he has made it to the Xuan Nu Palace. While Lin Ru Tan thinks that De Kun may not be a match for Chu Ting, Jang Lian tells them that De Kun is a one in a thousand year martial art genius and is ranked first all over the nation with her cultivation almost in the satisfaction realm. However, Chu King doesn't move. He thinks De Kun wants to trick him into separating from his friends so she can take advantage of them. However, she tells him his friends will be safe and sound if he can make it out alive. Chu Ting heads inside and meets De Kun. She reveals her face, and they soon begin fighting. She summons her earthly flame sword and launches an attack at Chu Ting, but he blocks the attack with his sword too. The fight gets so intense, they break out of the roof and suspend. Dickon is surprised that a man can cultivate to such an extent. She clones herself into three using the cloning technique and attacks Chu Ting, but he blocks the attacks and commends her cloning ability, saying that even he cannot tell the difference between the clones. He then dashes at the D.I. can and tries to stab her. But her clone quickly intercepts and takes the damage. Deacon realizes that Chu King was deceiving her when he said he could not differentiate between her clones. Deacon gets provoked and unleashes more power. She begins attacking with the pure energy bullets. Chu King dodges and realizes they won't stop, so he shows his skills too. He unleashes the true dragon and attacks with it, while Deacon also unleashes her power, releasing poisonous substances into the air an explosion ensues. Meanwhile, Jiang Lian becomes scared that the poison will affect her. However, Ling Ru Tan summons her snake beast, which absorbs all the poison. On seeing the huge snake, Jiang Lian faints. The next day, Deacon escapes, and Chu Ting is disappointed that he couldn't capture her with his current strength. Ling Ru Tan appears on the snake with passed out Jiang Lian and commends Chu Ting for the battle. However, he tells him he must take his revenge, and Chu Ting tells him he will help him. Chu Ting then remembers that the Empress tasked him to find a butterfly. He wonders where the butterfly might be, but Ling Ru Chan shows him the butterfly he caught, which is the same butterfly Chu Ting is looking for, and Chu King becomes excited. Meanwhile, De Kan is injured. She tells her elders that this is the first time in 20 years she has been beaten and tells them to prepare for their first move upon leaving the island. She also orders them to find Chu King's family members and capture them alive. She heads to a place where a portal opens and enters to meet Bai Ling, Suan Nu Palace's fifth elder. She asked about the Holy Stone, saying it is their ace as it's the only thing that can limit Chu King's power, and she also instructs her to protect it well. At the Imperial Palace, the Empress, Cheng Tian, Chu Ting, and Meng Zui analyze the information on the Suan Nu Palace power distribution, shown from the butterfly Chu King brought back. The Empress receives a call from Gong Nan who tells her that the Xuan New Palace has attacked Jinmen, and the city has been blown up. She adds that the local supervisors, the Defense Army, and Chu King's parents are all out of touch. On hearing this, Chu Tsing immediately heads for the door. However, he receives a call from Sing Lai. He discovers his parents and sister are safe with Sing Lai in the bombing bunker. Sing Lai then asks him to immediately send the head martial arts supervisor, the military general, and the nearest military envoy to support them. Chu Ting relays the message to the Empress, and she immediately orders Gong Nian to do it. Sing Lai realizes that the Empress is with Chu Ting. The Empress takes the phone from Chu Ting and asks Sing Lai how long she will hide from her. As Sing Lai tries to talk, they lose signal, and the call ends. Chu Ting tells the Empress he must visit Jinmen to check on his family, and Meng Zhu volunteers to accompany him. After a while, they arrive at Jinmen and see the whole place in ruins. Tang Rong, Tang Xian's mother, suddenly appears and takes them to a secret basement through a manhole. She takes them to where some mothers are hiding, and Chu Ting asks her for the details of what happened at Jinmen. Two days earlier, Tang Rong and other citizens received a strange message alerting them that Jinmen was about to be attacked by the Xuan Nu Palace and urging them to find shelter. However, Tang Rong discarded it, thinking it was a trick by scammers until they suddenly received an Air Force warning on the same subject. Suddenly, explosions hit the city, led by Yu Yang, the new great elder of the Xuan Nu Palace. Everyone started to run for their lives, and Tang Rong quickly called Tang Ji, the head of the military supervision, to tell her about the situation. But Tang Ji got enraged and went to attack without a proper strategy. Back to the present, the army is already destroyed, and the chief martial arts supervisor, Gong Yu, has been captured, with many other recorded deaths. 
Tang Rong tells them that Jinmin's communication system is interrupted, and they cannot contact the outside world. Meng Zui is surprised they had no help, even when the Empress sent the nearest army and martial arts supervisor for backup. Chu Ting reasons that the Yixuan New Palace may have blocked them and suspects it must have trailed him, making the basement no longer safe. Suddenly, Yu Yang hits the door to the room they are all hiding. Chu Ting gives Meng Zui and Tang Rong his protection jade pendants and amulets to the other people present for their protection. The people initially start to criticize him, saying he is the one who led the Yixuan New Palace in, and also wonder how a mere man can help them. Seeing this, Tang Rong rebukes them and tells them to do what they want. Yu Yang soon breaks the door open, and Chu Ting tells Tang Rong to lead everyone to the exit while he stays and buys time for them. Meng Zhi objects to Chu King facing Yu Yang alone as she is a rare poison trainer, but he tells her to trust him. Meng Zhi advises him not to fight at close range with Yu Yang before leaving with the others. Yu Yang orders her girls to follow after them and not let anyone escape, but Chu King prevents them from passing. Yu Yang launches an attack at Chu Ting, intending to poison him, but he hits her with his powers before she even comes near. She realizes that Meng Zui must have told him to keep a distance from her when fighting. The ladies attempt to get past him again, but he prevents them. They complain to Yu Yang, and she kills all of them instantly. Seeing this, Chu Ting reasons that she is too powerful, and he must not let her make it out alive. He attacks her with his sword, but she blocks it with a barrier. However, she attempts to devour his spiritual energy from the sword with her poison, but Chu Ting increases his spiritual power's concentration speed, which causes his sword to pierce through the barrier she formed. Yu Yang realizes that Chu Ting is very powerful, even much more than the Xuan New Palace Master, so she decides to use her ace move, but Chu Ting counterattacks with a more powerful move. She realizes she is not his match and then uses the cloning technique. However, Chu Ting ridicules her saying she is far below her master, using this same move on him, and he immediately beats all the clones. He then dashes at her as she attempts to run away, but a sudden barrier forms and protects her. He discovers it was Hagning, a hiding master and Bai Ling who saved her. Meanwhile, Yang Yu's ladies continue to attack Tang Rong and others outside, but the amulets Chu Ting gave them are working. Meng Zui and Tang Rong cannot together to fight them. Chu King appears and kills all the Yu Yang's ladies and tells Meng Zui and Tang Rong he knows a safe place they can go to. Meanwhile, the Empress is told that Jinmen has disappeared since Chu King and Meng Zui entered. She panics and tells them to send more force, but Wu Ji advises her that they need to declare war status, as this is a battle between warriors and take the citizens must be reassured and led to the demilitary areas for safety. She adds that Chu Ting and Meng Zui have extraordinary cultivation so they should be able to defend themselves. The Empress reasons with this and tells them to activate the third plan immediately, and they should order the local force and the supervisors to escort the people to the demilitary areas. She also tells them to open a press and announce that the nation has entered war mode. Chu King takes them to his mansion in Vermilion Bird Town, but the mansion has also been affected. He activates a secret mechanism and takes them inside on getting inside, he is surprised that he can't find any trace of his family since his parents know how to activate it. Suddenly, Sing Lai appears with his parents, and he runs to hug them. Sing Lai mentions the demilitary area, and Xu Ting asks about it. She tells him that the demilitary areas were created when normal people and warriors decided to live in harmony. They agreed on a rule that warriors' war cannot affect the mere people, and to assure the survival benefits for the mere people, both sides created demilitary areas. A special formation studied and built by the 10 best formation practitioners of the nation was put in the area, after which those 10 practitioners killed themselves to ensure no one else could break the shield. Chu Ting asks why his father and sister are still here and not in the demilitary area when they are mere people, and Sing returns the question by asking what the Xuan New Palace has against him to the point that they sent an elder in search of his family. She yells that she tried to open the demilitary gate but had to run down the sewage just to protect his family member. Meng Zhu points out that Xing Lai used the hiding technique and asked why about it since the Xuan New Palace took all the hiding masters back then during the great war between them and the Imperial Palace, and the ones left were brutally killed. Xing Lai replies that it's a long story. Chu Ting senses that someone is approaching and tells Meng Zhu and Xing Lai to hide their auras. Xing Lai immediately activates the invisibility technique to hide them. Kaxi Ning and Grandma Dan appear and break the door open. 
Xi Ning tells her agents to search the whole area. But after searching for a while, they don't sense any magic fluctuations. Sing Ning then unleashes some insects, capable of getting past the invisibility technique. On seeing this, Chu King tells the others not to panic as the insects are low quality and cannot touch them. However, one of them gets afraid of one of the insects and uses her magic. The X1 New Palace agents detect this and launch attacks immediately. Chu King blocks the attacks with his magic. The X1 New Palace sisters attack again, but Chu King summons his sword and kills them in one strike. Some other ones get past him and head for Meng Zhu, and others but Meng Zhu counterattacks. Xing Lai detects the Xuan New Palace's hiding formations and informs everyone to be careful. However, while she is still talking, the Xuan New Palace sisters suddenly surround them. Chu Ting sees this and attempts to help them, but Brahma Dan intercepts him. She brings out her staff and casts the Soul Stealing Skull spell, which makes them go berserk as it takes away their conscious mind when it comes in contact with someone. The X1 New Sisters go all out attacking again. Meng Zhu begins fighting them to protect the others, and when Chu King sees this, he thinks to himself that he must handle Grandma Dan quickly so he can go and help Meng Zhu. So he reinforces his dragon attack even more and finally overpowers Grandma Dan. He heads for Meng Zhu's attackers and protects Meng Zhu. He tells Sing Lai that they need to escape as they can't continue fighting like this. There are too many of them. Upon his instruction, everyone quickly gathers behind him and he forms a protective barrier around them. Then Sing Lai attempts to activate the invisibility technique, but Chu Ting realizes that Tang Rang and her subordinate, Tang Nian, are not within the shield. She is currently in Tai Ning's hand. Chu Ting tells Sing Lai they should go when he gives the signal, as he must stay behind to save Tang Rong. He steps out of the protective shield and signals the others to leave while he talks with Xin Ning, demanding that he drink some pills if he wants Tang Rong released. After they successfully escape, Chu Ting deceives Aksai Ning by telling her she is only doing him a great favor, trying to kill Tang Rong as she never wanted him and her daughter to be together. He pretends not to be concerned about Tang Rong and attempts to escape, so he breaks the roof above them, and when Xi Ning gets distracted, Chu Ting immediately saves Tang Rong and grabs Aksai Ning by the neck. However, Grandma Dan rescues her and calls a retreat, but unfortunately, water starts to flood in from the roof Chu Ting broke earlier and it washes everyone away. However, he sees Tang Nain in the water and saves her too. He then takes him outside. On getting outside, he discovers that the Nun River has flooded and wonders if something happened to Wu Jiu, the dragon. He decides to go and check what's happening. So, he immediately puts Tang Rong and Tang Nain in a protective formation and heads to the middle of the Yun River. He discovers that Wu Jiu has disappeared. He soon sees De Can and Feng Xi on the dragon and challenges them. The already possessed dragon fires an attack toward him, but he dodges it. Feng Tai tells De Ken not to waste her time on Xu Ting as they have a more important matter to deal with. She activates a move, sending a butterfly to Chu King, which makes him realize she is the Empress spy. The butterfly relays the message that De Ken captured Wu Jiao for two reasons, to enhance her image and for her daughter De Ji, who went unconscious due to transferring secret martial art. Chu Ting reasons that he was too careless to allow De Ji to be taken, and also he thinks of guarding the Yun River or else hundreds of towns and cities would be drowned. Chu Ting removes a dragon scale from his body and transforms it into a dragon. He then activates a formation that brings it to life and sends it into the Yun River. Suddenly the flooded water across Jinmen starts to recede. Meanwhile, the Xuan New Sisters continue to attempt to attack Tang Rong and Tang Nian and are almost breaking the shield Chu Ting set to protect them. Tang Rong attempts to fight back to prevent being taken hostage, but Chu King soon appears and fires an attack at them. Grandma Dan and Kaisen Nain block the attack and immediately retreat as they have already sustained much damage on this mission. Chu Ting leads Tang Rong and Tang Nian to Meng Zui and others by tracing the aura of the amulet he gave to her. Sing Lai introduces Chu Ting to Zhang Fi and Wana, sent by the Empress but blocked outside by the Xuan Du Palace. Zhang Fi and Wana tell them that they have prepared helicopters to help them leave there as soon as possible, and the helicopter soon arrives and takes them to the Imperial Capital. At the Imperial Palace, Chu Ting asks why Di Can is trying to enhance her image with Wu Jiao. Meng Zui is surprised that he doesn't know and tells him that the Imperial girl chosen by the dragon always becomes the Empress, as the dragon symbolizes the Empress. Chu Ting is surprised that there is such a thing and realizes that this is why everyone is interested in dragons. 
Seeing this, the Empress remembers what King Suan told her about Chu Ting. Chu Ting asks the Empress if there are dragons in the palace, as Sing Lai said she once had a dragon. The Empress says yes and takes him to a secret basement where a dragon is kept. On seeing the dragon, Meng Zvi asks why the dragon is locked, and the Empress explains that the White Dragon God was originally the most powerful guardian of the Empire and had been guarding her since she was born. However, Deacon secretly assembled formation cultivators to study black art and used it to control the dragon in a bid to take over the throne. She couldn't control it, but this led to the dragon suffering mental damage and attacking people indiscriminately. She adds that the dragon has gotten worse since then. Chu Ting volunteers to check it, and it reacts aggressively as soon as he moves closer to the dragon. Chu Ting flies to meet it in the air and touches it, trying to calm it. The dragon swallows him, and in the dragon's belly, he discovers that the dragon does not mean evil. He then sees two children, one of which looks exactly like when he was a kid. The kids run to have a goddess. The goddess tells them that men and women have their strengths and the holy stone shouldn't exist. The kids ask her what a holy stone is, and she tells them they will know when they grow up. The kids suddenly transform into dragons, the white and the golden dragons. The white dragon vomits Chu Ting back out and tells him he has been waiting for him. Chu Ting realizes that he is the second dragon. Then the white dragon tells him that he is now very weak to carry out the mission of the goddess, and only Chu Ting can now fulfill it. He tells Chu Ting to kill him and get the pearl so their strengths can become one. However, Chu Ting first objects, but the white dragon insists that he kills him. Then Chu King summons his sword and kills him. The white dragon tells him he missed those days when they were little, referring to him as Jin Tong, and he bids him farewell. Chu Ting absorbs the pearl and immediately hears the goddess call him. Little Jin Tong runs to hug the goddess in tears as he warns the passing away of his brother. The goddess reminds him to destroy the holy stone, and Chu Ting regains consciousness. He tells Meng Zui and the Empress that he saw a woman who seems like his real mother, but he doesn't understand what happened. A few days later, Chu King's parents and sister are taken to the Imperial Palace to live there, and Chu Xiao is very excited to be in the palace. However, Sing Lai suddenly badges in and forces Chu Xiao to go to the demilitary zone to be with her boyfriend. Afterward, the Empress reinstates Sing Lai to her previous position, and Sing Lai swears her loyalty. The Empress tells Meng Zui to take Chu King's parents to settle while she privately talks with Chu Ting. The Empress asks Chu Xing if he is from this world, and realizing that King Suan must have told her, he replies that he originally thought he was not from this world, but now he is unsure. The Empress asks if this concerns the White Dragon and what happened in the basement. Chu Ting is surprised that they didn't hear anything and says that he and the White Dragon must have spoken a language from a long time ago. However, he assures the Empress that he is on her side and will help her defeat the Xuan Nu Palace. One of the palace officials comes to report that some elders are waiting to see Chu Ting outside, and he heads there immediately. On getting outside, he discovers they are elders from the Chu family who were formerly against his family but have now come to reconcile with him. He scares them off, knowing they came just because of the benefits they can derive from him now that he has some level of success and a relationship with the Imperial Palace. The Empress arrives and commends him for that. She tells him his mother they will be the new Chu family. At the Hunter's Bar, Meng Zi talks with her subordinate, Chu Xin, who is happy to work with her boss again. Chu King soon arrives, and Meng Zi tells him that Tang Zian is waiting to thank him. He meets Sinin, and as she tries to thank him, he stops her, saying she doesn't need to. She tells him that the heaviness of her heart has been removed as her grandma and mom have reconciled. Chu King becomes excited, and Zian stands up to leave. Zhang Lian arrives and tells him about the report that Nan is from the Xuan New Palace and has occupied half of the hunters, which means she has countless people in the imperial capital working with her. She asks what they should do, and Chu Ting tells her they will catch the spy first and reunite the hunters after. She also tells him that the Xuan New Palace has not made any move for a while. She suspects they are planning to make a big move. Meanwhile, at Yan Mountain, Dickin controls Wu Jiao to vomit the pearl and she channels the power to DG's unconscious body. DJ regains consciousness, and Di Ken is excited. However, when DJ discovers that her mother is still evil and is trying to seize the throne, she releases a dagger and stabs herself, saying she doesn't want to see anyone die again. Di Ken won't allow her to die and starts using the human puppet sorcery to revive her. She wants her daughter to be a killing puppet. 
Then Katai enters and sees this, but Deacon tells her to get out and guard outside to prevent anyone from coming in. After Deacon finishes performing the sorcery, she gets weak from exhaustion, and Feng Kaisei offers to help peel her wounds but Deacon hits her hand off her, and asks if she also thinks she is cruel like her daughter called her. Anyway, Feng Tai flatters her, and Di can becomes relieved. At the Hunter's Information Center, Huagua reports that a rumor has been spread that the Yuswan New Palace worked for the previous empresses, and did all the dirty work for them. Some other provocative information was also released. This led to a protest by the cultivators in the city, fighting for human rights and showing support for the Xuan New Palace. Gong Shu handles the situation and arrests all the protesters who are indiscriminately spreading rumors that hadn't been verified. Chu Ting heads to the palace to meet Sing Lai and asks her about the principle of the concealment technique as he wants to study how to solve it. Cheng Tian tells him that she can't tell him as her master Ex Ning's mother, but a restriction on her preventing her from using the technique and teaching it to anyone. She adds that Sing Lai broke the restriction with her own will, causing it to loosen a little and be able to be used, but she is still unable to teach it. Chu Ting asks how they will solve this situation, and Sing Lai tells him there is a connection between the concealment and the invisibility techniques. The invisibility technique is the low-level version of the concealment technique that can only be used by oneself. Cheng Tian says they have been trying to break through from the invisibility to the concealment technique, but have failed. Chu Ting asks Sheng Tuan to teach him the invisibility technique. However, she tells him it is the secret guard's technique skill, but he didn't learn it. She leaves it in Han Shuang's hands to teach him, and Han Shuang reveals herself immediately. Chu Ting is surprised and wonders how long she has been there. They head to the training room, and Han Shuang begins to teach him how to use the technique. Chu Ting quickly learns it, and Han Shuang asks why he suddenly wants to learn the technique. He tells her he wants to find something in the Xuan New Palace. Sing Lai soon arrives, she tells him that his little tricks can't escape the eyes of the concealment experts, and she will help him practice them. She starts training him, and no matter how he tries to hide himself, she senses it and hits him. Chu Ting suddenly comes up with an idea on how to perfectly conceal himself and Sumi gets it. She is shocked that he could get it that fast. The second trial begins in which he has to find Sing Lai while she conceals herself. Sing Lai begins to attack in her concealed state and Chu Ting blocks all the attacks, but he still can't find her. He wonders what the spell's weakness could be and soon notices some little distortions where the concealment technique is used, revealing Sing Lai's position. He immediately grabs her, and she is shocked he quickly solved that too. Meanwhile, the protest continues outside the palace, and the people demand the release of the arrested cultivators. It happens that the Xuan New Palace has been releasing some terrible information. She complained about her tragic situation traveled on a dragon saying she is the real dragon blood, and also lied that the empress killed the white dragon because it didn't choose her, all these in a bid to get the people on her side. Chu Ting sees a strange symbol on DG's chest and realizes that Deacon has used an evil formation on her. The empress beats herself up over letting DJ leave the palace, but Jimin tells her that she should rather be concerned about solving the problem of public opinion, and the only to do this is to invite the white dragon out. Chu Ting takes up the responsibility and heads outside immediately. He unleashes the white dragon and tells the people that the flooding they experienced some days before was caused by Dekan, who captured the master of the Yunjing River. He adds that the white dragon god saved the city by turning one of its scales into a dragon to continue guarding the river. The empress also makes a live broadcast and explains what Dekan did to the white dragon god in the past. The other captured cultivators released and they all realize they believed false information. However, someone appears and tries to change their mind again. She says the Empress is lying and asks why the White Dragon God is not carrying the Empress but Chu Ting, doubting this is really the White Dragon God. Chu Ting threatens them for questioning the Empress' authority and the divine power of the White Dragon God, and they quickly repent. The people begin to see golden dots dropping from the sky and realize that this is the spiritual power of the White Dragon God. Dickon gets angry after realizing that her plans have been truncated. However, the Holy Stone suddenly begins to speak, and she tells her not to worry about the White Dragon, but should rather be worried about the Golden Dragon. The Holy Stone tells her that she created the world, and is its master, and adds that she will give her the strength to kill the Golden Dragon. Meanwhile, Chu Ting is with Meng Zui. He tells her he wants to teach Ling Ruotian and Zunian the concealment technique, and take them to the Xuan New Palace, 
A few days later, Xu Ting, Zinian, and Ling Ruochen meet Wanya to learn about the Yixuan New Palace's concealment techniques before embarking on the mission. On getting to the entrance of the Yixuan New Palace, they discover the boundary leading into the palace using Ling Ruochen's snakes. They immediately activate the concealment technique and head inside. They head to where Dikin is, and on getting to a point, Xu Ting heads on to meet Dikan while Zinian and Ling Ruotin stay behind. On getting inside, Dikan instantly detects him and attacks him immediately. He is shocked that Dikan can see him. Dikan exudes some strangely powerful aura, and Xu Ting wonders how she has gotten so powerful in just a few days. Zion and Ling Ruotin see that they are fighting but stay still and patiently wait for Xu Ting. Dikan unleashes an even more powerful aura and Chu Ting tells Zilian and Ling Ruotin to leave the Xuan New Palace immediately. Ling Ruotin attempts to leave immediately, but Zion holds her back. Dikan and Chu Ting continue to engage in a fierce battle, and Chu Ting discovers she is not getting weak. He reasons that he has to finish this as fast as he can, and he unleashes the Golden Dragon and attacks her. Dikan is shocked to find out that Chu Ting is the Golden Dragon. Meanwhile, Feng Xi and Bai Ling are also watching the fight. The Golden Dragon deals major damage to her, and the Holy Stone appears immediately. The Holy Stone talks about how the goddess exhausted her cultivation and sent him into reincarnation, and the Golden Dragon is surprised that she knows him. He fires golden light at the Holy Stone, but she devours it instantly, shocking the Golden Dragon. He dashes at the Holy Stone, but her aura repels him and hits him back heavily to the ground. Because Chu Ting is heavily injured, Zilian tells Ling Ru Tan to leave while she goes to save Chu Ting, and Ling Ru Tan tries to discourage her. At the same time, Feng Kassa reasons that Chu Ting must not die, but she can't reveal her identity, so she immediately informs the Empress about the Holy Stone. Zion transforms into the Death Butterfly and launches to save Chu Ting while DG tries to capture him. Zion grabs the Golden Dragon and flies off with him. The Holy Stone gets angry that DG interrupted her fight and attempts to kill, but Dakin pleads, saying DJ is her daughter. The Holy Stone agrees to spare her, but on the condition that she catches the Golden Dragon. Deacon then sends her agents to search for Chu Tsing immediately and capture him at all costs. Meanwhile, Zion takes the Golden Dragon to a cave following his guidance, and on getting there, he enters the cave through a formation to connect with the goddess. Chu Ting begins to meditate and remembers when he fought the Holy Stone in his past life. The Holy Stone injured him severely, and the goddess had to exhaust her cultivation to reincarnate him. While she reincarnated him, she told him he must find a way to destroy the Holy Stone. He remembers the sword he found on a mountain in his quest to find how to destroy the Holy Stone, and he suddenly realizes that this sword is the key to destroying the Holy Stone. He fully recovers from the cave and tells Zion and Ling Ruochan to wait for his signal and for the army to attack before going out. The next day, the Empress receives the message from Feng Kexi, and she immediately gives Sing Lai the peony order to mobilize all the troops in the city to suppress the Xuan New Palace and rescue Chu Ting. Chu Ting returns to the scene and thinks of dealing with Bai Ling and Kaisening first, then breaking the enchantment and concealment techniques around Yunchen so the army can come in. While the Xuan New Palace sisters attempt to attack him, he gets past them and instantly kills Xi Ning and Bai Ling. Suddenly, the barrier around Yunshan breaks and Di Kin thinks this is her doom. However, the Holy Stone tells Dead Kin she will lend her all her strength to kill Chu Ting and become the second generation goddess. The Holy Stone merges with her, and she becomes very powerful. She and Chu Ting begin to fight, with Chu Ting now attacking with his sword. The army from the imperial capital arrives and starts to kill everyone. Zion and Ling Ru Chen also join in the battle, using their respective abilities. The Golden Dragon eventually beats Da Kan, and as he tries to take the Holy Stone from her, the Holy Stone begins to use sorcery that steals other people's cultivation and kills them. He quickly carries Zinian and Ling Ru Chen to where the others are and activates a shield over them. Deacon sees that Feng Kaxet is also being drained of her cultivation and tells the Holy Stone not to touch. But the Holy Stone reveals that she is a spy and deserves to die, making Di can feel betrayed. However, Chu Ting dashes at Di Kan and attacks to distract her, and he quickly saves Feng Kaxai. Chu Ting then faces Di Kan head on and dodges all her attacks. He activates the Dao Yun formation, which he cultivated in the immortal world using the sword, soon separating Di Kan from the Holy Stone. 
the formation binds the holy stone, and she tells Chu Ting that the world will no longer exist if she dies, and the people he loves will disappear. Chu Ting replies that the world is no longer how she created it. The goddess rewrote it a long time ago before she died. He strikes the holy stone with his sword, and it is destroyed. He then falls to the ground, having exhausted his spiritual strength. Deacon attempts to stab him, but DJ darts her chain weapon at her, intending to kill her. However, Feng Kesi defends De Kan and takes the hit instead. She dies telling De Kan that she could not betray the Empress because she was kind to her. Likewise, her loyalty to her is also real. De Jin attempts to attack again, but Chu King stops her and removes the enchantment on her by placing his head against hers. A few years later, Meng Zui and Chu Ting have now given birth to a son, and they both celebrate him on his birthday. Meng Zui tells him that he is the first prince of the empire and she will one day give him her position. Zion, Chengxi, Huawei, and others soon appear, and they all head to the banquet hall to celebrate the prince's birthday. Thanks for being a part of this recap. Many more recaps await you, so do well to subscribe to this channel, turn on the notification bell, and give this video a like. See you on the next one.